clicking. Welcome to another Nargulous production. Today we're going to be talking about the properties of definite integrals. So in the last video, maybe we talked about what the what a definite integral is. Okay, what does it do? Okay, it represents the area that's underneath the curve. So now there are some properties that go along with this, and we're going to actually find the area underneath the curve as a definite integral, the true area using uh, area formulas that you've worked with in the past from shapes class or wherever else that may be. So the definite integral, the integral from a to b of f of x dx represents the area that's underneath the curve on the interval from a to b. So if I had a curve and I called it f of x and I had a and I had b, then the integral from a to b of that function would represent this area that's underneath the curve. Area underneath the curve is bounded by the curve f of x and the x-axis. Okay, so if you have area here, it's bounded by the curve f of x and the x-axis. All right, this is the area that I'd be finding if I were to evaluate this definite integral. The right? area underneath the x-axis is considered to be negative. That is important. All right, so meaning if I had this, let's say, and here was my A, here was my B, I would be finding this area, this area, and then I'd also be finding this area, all three of these areas. This area would be negative area. These other two areas are above the x-axis. They would be positive. Okay, so that's what we mean by area underneath the x-axis is considered negative. All right, so Here's what we're going to do. I want to integrate from 0 to 3 x plus 2 dx. So here's what I want to calculate. I want to calculate the area that's underneath the curve f of x equals x plus 2 between 0 and 3. All right, so I'm actually going to draw the picture. So at 0... y-intercept is 2, then I got to go up one, right one, make a point, up one, right one, make a point, up one, right one, make a point, and 3 is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to connect my picture there. So what I want to do is I want to first see what the area looks like. So this is what my area will look like here from 0 to 3. It looks like this. This is the region that I'm talking about here, this region here. I want to find the area of that region. There's a couple ways that you can do it, okay? These problems, you will be able to use area formulas that you learned back in shapes class to be able to do it. Uh, you can do it with a rectangle and a triangle, if you cut this in, in pieces here. Or this is a trapezoid, we agree. These are the two parallel sides here, okay? So you could do it with a trapezoid. I'm going to do it with a trapezoid just to do something different. The area of a trapezoid is one-half the height times the sum of the bases, so the area of that trapezoid is one half. The height is measured this direction. So that's one, two, three units. Base one, doesn't matter which one's which. Two. And one, two, three, four, five, five. So the area then is seven times 321, 21 over two. So that means the integral from zero to three of x plus two dx will be evaluated and you will get 21 over 2. That is the actual area that's underneath the curve, f of x equals x plus 2, between 0 and 3. It's the true area. It's not an approximation. It truly is the actual area. Okay? All right. Let's look at B. That's the idea here at the beginning. We're going to integrate from negative 2 to 5 of 4 with respect to x. Okay, let's draw that picture first. So, 4. 1, 2, Three, four up. F of x equals four. That's a horizontal line through four. There it is. And now I want to work from 
negative 2 over to 5. So I want to find that area. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. It's a rectangle. Right? It's a rectangle. Okay. It's this area in here, bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So how do I find the area of this rectangle? Well, we've done a lot of that. It's the base times the height. The base measures 7 units, and the height is 4. So the integral from negative 2 to 5 of 4 with respect to x is 28, the area of this rectangle. Let's try letter C. The integral from negative 3 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared with respect to x. Now the question is the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now that may not look familiar to you. Hopefully it does. It might not. If it doesn't, I'll show you what it is. We'll square both sides. And I'll add x squared. I get x squared plus y squared equals 9. That's the, an equation you should recognize. You've done it. Okay, you've done it before. It's the equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals 9 is a circle with radius 3. All right. But it's just the square root of 9 minus x squared. It's not plus or minus. So it's only the top half of that circle. It's a semicircle. So it's a semicircle from negative 3 to 3 with radius 3. I want to find the area of this semicircle. The area of the semicircle is half the height, or I'm sorry, 1 half pi r squared, right? Half pi r squared. So that's going to be 1 half times pi. The radius is 3. So the area then is 9 over 2 pi. That's what this integral will be evaluated to. Okay, so now what we're doing, like I said, is we are literally taking shapes that we know how to find the area to. We're giving you functions that will become one of those shapes, and then you can find the area. The other way we can do it is give you a picture. So here's a picture. Okay, this is the graph of f. I want to find the area or the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f of x dx. What does the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f of x dx mean? I want to find the area underneath the curve between negative 2 and 2. Well, here's negative 2. Here's 2. What is the area between these two bounded by the curve and the x-axis? It's the semicircle here. So the area of that semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. So that's 1 half pi times 2 squared. So that's 4 half 4 is 2. This integral is 2 pi. Okay, that's the area that's underneath the semicircle. All right, how about from 0 to 5? Okay, so let's see what that looks like. 0 to 5. 0 to 5. So now we have a bunch of different things. We have this. We have this under the x-axis, and then we have that mini triangle there. So we have a quarter circle, 1 quarter pi r squared. So that's going to be 1 quarter pi times 2 squared, which is going to be pi. We also have this triangle that's underneath the x-axis, so its area will be negative. Remember, if it's underneath, it's negative area. So we got 1, 2 by 1. So that's going to be half base times the height, but it's negative. So it's going to be negative 1 half, 2 times 1. So that's going to be negative 1. And then finally, we have this other little triangle, but it's above the x-axis, so its area is positive. That's going to be 1 half base times the height. That's 1 half of... 1 times 1, so that's a half. So the overall area, we add them up, pi minus 1 plus a half, which is pi minus a half. That's the area that's underneath this curve. That is the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x dx. Okay? So, again, we can draw you pictures that represent it. What you have to understand here is that the definite integral is the area underneath the curve. The analogy is derivative is to tangent line as definite integral is to area under the curve. You have to know that as well as you know derivative means slope of tangent line. All 
all right? All right. So now we have some properties for definite integrals. Some of these are pretty easy to understand, I think. So the first property is if you integrate from a number to itself of that function, take a function, integrate from a number to itself. Think about it in terms of area. Well, there is no area, right? You don't go anywhere. So you literally create no area. So that's zero. The integral uh, from A to B of two functions that are added or subtracted with respect to x. You can do that the same way you do an indefinite integral. You can split them apart, find each one of their areas separately from A to B, and then add or subtract their areas. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Uh, suppose C is a real number, then the integral from A to B of C times F of X DX. So this is like, how would you integrate five F of X DX? Okay, you can do it the same way you do an indefinite integral. You can take the number out. So you can find the area that's underneath the curve of f of x and then multiply the answer by whatever 5 or whatever number that multiplier is. All right. So now in letter, uh, the fourth property here, it's the integral from b to a. We're assuming that a is smaller than b, right? A, is, we're talking about an interval, smaller to bigger. The problem now is that the bigger bound, the end point is at the bottom and the start point is at the top. That's wrong, okay? We have to fix that. To fix it, what you do is you negate the integral. It means you wanna go in the opposite direction. So you can negate it and then you're allowed to flip the bounds back the way they're supposed to be, okay? And then finally, suppose C is between A and B then you can integrate a and b at uh, of f of x dx and use c as a go-between point, which makes sense. Let's say I had an area. Here's a, here's b. I wanted to find all of its area that's underneath the curve. I want to find all this area. But then I have a point c that's somewhere else. It doesn't have to be in the middle. Well, couldn't I just find the area from A to C and then the area from C to B, add them together, and that would give me the total area? That's what this property says. It says you can integrate from A to C of f of x dx and then add the integral from C to B of f of x dx, and it gives you the same area. Okay, these are the properties of definite integrals. Let's use them real quick just to make sure we got the hang of it. So here's some information that I'm going to give you. So I'm telling you that the integral from 1 to 8 of f of x dx is equal to 7. The integral from 8 to 10 of f of x dx is equal to 9. And the integral from 8 to 1 of g of x is equal to 5. Okay, first thing we need to do before we even do any of these problems, these bounds are backward, so I need to fix that. So to fix it, I have to negate the integral. Which means that... This integral is really the integral, if the integral from eight to one of g of x is equal to five, then the integral from one to eight of g of x is equal to negative five. This is the one we're gonna be using here in the future. Okay, all right. Now, letter A wants me to find the integral from one to 10 of five times f of x dx. Okay, first things first. My definite integral properties allow me to take the five and put it out front. So instead of finding the integral of 5 f of x, I can do 5 times whatever the integral is from 1 to 10 of f of x dx. So now I know the integral from 1 to 8 is 7. I know the integral from 8 to 10 is 9. So then I would hope you can tell me the integral from 1 to 10 would be 7 plus 9. So that's 5 times 16. That's 80. Okay. I do these, I tend to do these on a number line. Sometimes they do get a little bit more complicated. All right, so you can do them on a number line. I'll show you real quick. So here's one, here's 10. That's the area I wanna find. I know from one to eight is seven. I know from eight to 10 is nine. So from one to 10, it's 16, okay? but they do get a little bit more complicated. These number lines are a little, they're helpful. 
All right, and letter B, I want the integral from 1 to 8 of f of x minus g of x dx. So I'm going to have to split these apart. I'm going to have to integrate from 1 to 8 f of x, and then integrate from 1 to 8 g of x. And I can do that. The laws allow me to add and subtract separately. So from 1 to 8 of f of x is 7. From 1 to 8 of g of x, we already fixed that, was negative 5. So 7 minus negative 5 is 12. And that's the area that's underneath this curve from 1 to 8. Okay? So definite integral means area underneath the curve. All right? There are some properties that you can use. You can also use shapes from shapes class to find the area that way if it's possible. Okay? And a lot of times it will be. All right? And that's it for now. And as always, thanks for clicking.